Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, uh, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I am super excited about today's episode, as I am every episode. But today, what's so special is we are streaming live from Dr. Amy Beard's house in Arkansas. So super excited. We're going to be discussing nature therapy. Amy has been on our podcast at least twice before, and she specializes in uh, functional medicine, and she's going to be talking about how important nature therapy is. We talk about sunlight and vitamin D all the time and how important that is, but it's so much more than that about why we need to get outside. So um, with that, I'm going to let Dr. Beard tell us about nature therapy. Oh, goodness. Well, you, you can shed some light on this topic. Too, yeah. You're well, always outside as well. Oh, I, I try to be. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of that, we're going to go for a bike right after this and which, get nature therapy, sure right? And as you can see, we're all really close together. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this is something I talk to my patients about all the time because it is astounding to me, all the people that are not getting outside, I like 20 minutes, like walking to their car and back and that's it. And they're wondering why they can't sleep and they feel bad. And, and, uh, and so we have to have this discussion about how, you know, we didn't evolve in doors, right. Under no. artificial lighting no. and recirculated air and constant same temperature. We were meant to be outside. Yeah. And sure. so, um, when you do that, I mean, all and not that we needed to do a bunch of research on it, but there's a lot out there on the effects so closer. on the effects of, <laughs> of um, nature therapy or just getting outside. Um, and so people are happier, less anxiety, less depression, better cognition, you name it. It's just, it's so good for us. Um, and so, you know, we, as you can see, we live on a farm. So we're outside all the time. And I can tell you personally that when I spend more time outside, I am in a better mood and I sleep better at night. Okay. Because, you know, that constant um, retinal exposure to the sun helps with circadian rhythms. And you bet that's going to impact your mood when you sleep good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Janet, you're going to say something. I am because I'm thinking of um, populations that, um, are outside all the time. And, and I feel like genetically they um, live longer. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, I you know, I, I'm just thinking about even people that have jobs that are outside too, just how different it is versus somebody that is in a cube all day long. Yes. Well, when we think about, you know, the things that were created in nature, whether it be the beautiful fall colors that we're seeing right mm -hmm. now, um, whether it be, you know, night versus day, um, you know, the, uh, we saw a lot of rivers and water driving to, um, your house. And it's just, uh, those things were created by accident. <laughs> so, you know, that means that it was created for us to enjoy right. it. If it wasn't created for us to enjoy, things would just be black and white. Right. You know, so there's so many things, you know, we always talk about, we talk about often about how important sunlight is and vitamin D production is in our, in our skin um, in response to sunlight. But it's so much more than that. Um, when we get out in nature and even get out in the sun or nature in general, there are so many neurotransmitters mm -hmm. that are stimulated. Some of what we do know, some of what we don't know, but it definitely, when we get out and enjoy nature, it definitely makes us feel better. You want to get into the details? I'm going to put you on the spot. You want to get into the details of neurotransmitters? Oh, uh, well, I mean, good, I mean, there's a lot of them. <laughs> right? and, and, and personally, I mean, and most of them are producing your gut. Right. So, but we know that being outside, there's just so many, the smells, the sights, right? even the feel of the breeze on your skin um, and, and all the, and you can, you know, the, what is it? The, we can get really off into nerdy land here with frequencies and vibrations and stuff. Well, then let's do it. Let's get nature, nerdy. <laughs> you know, but they do. And it's, it's a, it's a natural vibrational frequency, right? So we have again, evolved with this type of environment and it, it seems like within the last 20 years or so, we have just gone completely away from that really, really quickly. And everybody is living inside because of modern times and our health is suffering because of it. So just think about when we get, especially out here, there's all kinds of smells because there's cows and, <laughs> and other animals and, and 
in, in garden. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. No, it's not. Okay. It's and, and um, think about uh, the, the feelings that that invokes. Yeah. For me, it's a very positive thing. Um, when I, especially when we're out hiking or biking, it's it's clean, fresh air. Uh, it's not you're not smelling all the smoke and other nasty stuff that you might get in urban areas. Um, so. Man, we could really go off on a lot of tangents on this. Well, you, you know, I, I think when I, leading up to this podcast, you, know, you and I have been discussing this uh, for a couple months now. And, uh, you know, it just hit me when you said something about, I always think of nature. When I think, when I thought of this, I thought of the, the things that we see, mm-hmm. you know, the colors and things like that and the water. But then you you hit on it. It's like the sounds, the smells. I mean, we have all these senses mm-hmm. that we um, get to benefit when we're out in nature and you don't get those when you're locked up inside. I mean, the sound of running water or the, the, like you say, the smells. So this is epigenetics. We're talking about this is generation after generation of these things interacting with your DNA in very positive ways um, in concert together and doing things we still don't even understand. Right. Um, but I know that it's good because yeah. when I have my patients get outside more, they start healing and feeling better. So there's definitely a correlation there. And I think maybe it's just spending less time on a computer or a phone is probably part of that too. Mm-hmm. Cause I tell them definitely do not take your phone outside with you. Just leave that baby back home. And uh, just sit outside, expose your retinas to the, to the more, you know, the morning, midday, evening sun uh, that uh, there alone will help reset your circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people don't do that anymore. And look what is happening. Right. So I'm, I'm going to touch on this a little bit because I feel like um, we have a lot of anxiety right now Mm -hmm. in our culture and, You know, if you go to a spa, the first thing that they do is they put on that music of running water. And, you know, I mean, so they've touched into that one. They've got that one right. You know, you have just the the tranquil sounds, but it's all nature usually running through that. And I think in order for your brain to actually calm down, sometimes we just need to have those cues from our nature because that's how we were were made. And if you are out there, then I don't think you realize it how often that we start calming down and why that's so important is if we're not calm and we're always in that flight state, then you aren't going to repair Mm -hmm. on your tissue level and your brain level. Your brain's not going to ever get to that point where things are calming. So Janet, tell them about our experience when we flew into Philadelphia and stepped off the plane and was there for like three or four days well, um, a few weeks you know, ago. At, we, we, we live in a very um, rural area as well. So for us, um, and we, we go into the mountains and we, you know, we, we do a lot of outside activity. So for us, this is kind of, you know, this is, you know, being at peace in nature is important to us. So we're in a big city, one of the largest cities in the United States, and we didn't realize how loud it was. We actually had to tell each other to stop yelling at each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> when we, it was so when weird. We, yeah, right. We were like, but it was constant horns. It was just um, traffic. People, the traffic. People it talking. Was people, it, and yeah. it was normal noises. Now I'm not. I'm not saying that this was horrible from the standpoint that people have to live. But if you never step out of it and never find that, I mean, there was, it was never quiet. It it was constant noise. And we didn't realize how we were just like, Oh, until we stepped away from it. And you actually, you actually could breathe and you're like, okay, we don't have to yell at each other. (laughs) hear each other It's like sensory overload. It it really was. Anyway. And we yeah. didn't even, we didn't even realize, no. well, it, there was, you know, and it's not like Jan and I haven't traveled to big cities before, but Philadelphia was the, um, probably the biggest. Dense. Yes. Yeah. Cause you know, we've been to LA of course. Um, oh, that's yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's so spread out. Right. And yeah. so Philadelphia, we just felt like there were just, just the concentration mm-hmm. of people. And, um, so we were kind of overwhelmed for three or four days, but we didn't really realize it until we got back home and we're like, 
Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, it's so Jeez. quiet here. <laughs> but the people in the city, because we have had guests stay with us, relatives or friends who are from the city like Chicago and they come out here and it's almost freaky to them. Yeah. For yeah. first of all, it, it can be quiet, but it also at certain times it can be really loud with crickets and frogs <laughs> and it would just, they're like, it's so, what is this? Yeah. You know? And we're like, this is nature. <laughs> right. I mean, to me, that's peaceful. Yeah. To me you know, too. When yeah, I hear I crickets, it's like, right, right. I and mean, they do say you get used to the sounds in the city because sure. it's some, yeah. you know, the background noise just finally does die down. Um, but like you said, it's for me coming from somewhere like this, it's a bit of a shock for the first few days. Yeah. Um, well, I know, you know, I, I think that generationally speaking, we were in, not that the cities are necessarily bad, but I think it's probably good to get out of the city Mm -hmm. and get into nature therapy. Absolutely. And really one thing we did notice is like in probably pretty much any major city is you only have to go an hour outside of the city and you're in a rural area. So um, it's it's, not hard. No, no, it's, it's not that difficult. So, um, and there are green spaces now in cities. That's true. They're they're trying to make an attempt to bring that to people, uh, which is good because you can get, some benefit from those green green spaces, but it's nothing like getting completely out of the city. Correct, correct. Right. So tell us, we're going to get some green space and some um, enjoy some nature therapy after our podcast. Mm-hmm. Where are we going to ride today? So um, because you told me you were bringing a certain bike, we are going to um, do the the trails on the Arkansas River and uh, go mm-hmm. across the largest pedestrian bridge in the country. Sweet. Um, the Big Dam Bridge. Okay. Awesome. So it is massive. It's awesome. It goes right across the Arkansas River and we'll ride along the river and towards downtown Little Rock. So you'll get to see that. Um, <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be excited I'm about sure that. that was on your bucket list. Um, <laughs> but no, it is still, a, you know, Little Rock is, uh, it's our capital, but it's not a big city. So it's still lots and lots of trees and it's almost like a suburban area for most big cities. Yeah. That's what it feels yeah. like to me. Well, I will tell you, big city is all relative, especially to somebody that's grown up in very small. I thought I grew up in small city until you talked to Janet. Because where did Janet grow up? North Dakota. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I mean, oh rural so North right. Dakota. That's my brother-in-law, right? <laughs> in my not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Janet was right outside of my not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So where Dot's pretzels were made. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. That's that place. Yes. So, you know, my first school, though, was even smaller than Velva. I went to a little school that there was five kids in my kindergarten class. Right. And literally <laughs> wow. five kids. K through 12. It's like a home still, co-op. Right? <laughs> K through 12, all the same building in, in this little town, Butte. And, of course, those were co-opted into bigger schools. But, um, yeah, I had the pleasure of going K through 12. And, you know, you knew everybody and everybody knew you. And I, I always tell Sean there was absolutely no bullying allowed in our school because there was so many families. Like we had six in ours, which was siblings was pretty normal, but um, there was three families with 16 kids. Oh, wow. So you can, if you, you can, couldn't beat up on anybody's no, brother or no, sister. No, no. There, <laughs> there was a sibling around the corner somewhere. And it just, and you were, you know, so, so it wasn't that way, but I will say one of the things that was really neat about it is you know, we, we were very fortunate to um, live in a very rural place and, and a lot of outdoor activity, and, and it was super fun that way. But, yeah, it was culture shock when um, meeting Sean and we went to uh, Seattle to the university district and places like that. It, he's like, you're quiet. I'm like, hmm, well, <laughs> well we're all so isolated. I, 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 I tell a story. This is a true story. I mean, Janet was born in a house without running water. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so you just think of how things have changed in the last no 50 No kidding. Years. Yeah. That's, that was Paul's uh, mom too. No electricity, no running water. And they had like 11 kids <laughs> and they made their own. So, I mean, it was, if they didn't grow it, they didn't eat it. Right? Well, I always tell Sean the story of going to school where um, I, I was not going to drink the milk at the school. There was something 
to my brain that said, oh, I said it smell right, right? And so they um, wanted a little meeting with my parents and my dad said, no, she doesn't need to drink that milk. She doesn't like it. And, and that was it. It was over. And it was just like, because I had never had milk from a carton or from one of the dispensers. Right. And I was like, this smells wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, gonna do it. I'm like, I feel like if we just started emulating what our grandparents did, we'd all right. be and, a you know, better off. I mean, healthier. Jen, I talk about it a lot, but we, we talk about, um, you know, that generation. So uh, Janet's dad was probably a generation older than my grandparents. So, so, um, and some of the things the that, yeah, 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 that's, that's right. awesome. Nature therapy. Yeah. Um, and Jen will tell some of the stories that, um, some of the things that he would say. And I mean, back then we thought he was crazy, but, uh, you look back and Janet tells a story of one time, you know, in the eighties when there was an anti-fat, anti-dairy craze, mm-hmm. whatever, mostly anti-fat, they were making margarine and selling yeah. margarine, how healthy it was. So Janet's mom brought home margarine. <laughs> and, right. And you know, they grew up on a dairy farm. Yeah. Right. And so Janet's dad ate it. Or maybe no. did he? No, he no. didn't. <laughs> and he just told me, he goes, you don't have to buy that ever again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <he does. laughs> and, he, and we think back and, you know, of course, I drank the Kool-Aid in the eight, 70s mm-hmm. and 80s. I was told how bad fat was. Right. And so even Janet and I. was a dietitian. I, I was telling people. Yeah, to right. Margarine. And even Janet yeah. and I, you know, when we first got out of college, we were using, you know, low fat stuff yeah. and no butter. And, of course, Janet loved butter growing up on the. On a, on a dairy farm. And now we realize, you know, Janet's dad was right. It's like yeah. the, the butter is good for us. We and, were all carb loading all the time. Yeah. yeah right. right. Just, just pure carbs. And we were talking about, you know, the, I mean, you just look at the food pyramid and what's on the top of the food pyramid, you know, grains. I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah. that's not, that's no, not, that was on the bottom. Remember uh, the, the foundation oh, uh, yeah. was all the flour and grains yeah, yeah. And, and all the starchy stuff. Right, right. Right. And I mean, now we realize those, you know, Janice dad's generation, which is my grandparents' generation, they ate bacon and eggs and yeah. and they lived a very healthy life. Yes, my grandparents did too. I mean, into the, well into their 90s. Yeah. Right? Well, right. well into their 90s. Yeah. And they were, I remember being chased by my great grandmother who was 80 at the time in the yard. She was 80 <laughs> know, right? and running me down. Yeah. I tell a story about my grandpa when we were teenagers, um, the grandkids. Um, my, they, my grandparents are from Missouri and they started a family young. So my grandma had my mom when she was 16. Mm -hmm. And so my grandma was a grandma when she was 36. So my grandpa was in his mid fifties, which at the time I thought was old, you know, when I was like 16, 15 (laughs) or 16 and and us and the cousins are, are, we're racing. It's like some kind of holiday and we're racing outside. And so my, here's my, um, grandpa comes out and we were talking he ate bacon and eggs every breakfast every yeah. breakfast and um he comes out and he starts running with us we're like oh yeah we're gonna do we did this kid <laughs> we're gonna smoke this old man and, and he beat us all oh, i mean yeah. it was incredible of course we're talking about a guy that did hard manual yes, labor right. most of his life right. and um spend up and spent their time outside yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Gardening yeah. or yeah. what have you, they were outside because there were no TVs and cell phones and computers and other distractions to bring them inside. Right. Yeah, and it wasn't, honestly, his health didn't go downhill <laughs> until he started um, going to the doctor. Going to the doctor. <laughs> you said well, it. I mean, it's true. I mean, that's and not working. Well, yeah, that's one thing. And, and he, said, he said something to me that hit my brother and I have a twin brother. And it hit us very hard. And when my grandpa, my grandpa's health, his mind, first of all, went started going downhill. And once he started accessing the healthcare system, they just, they, 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 oh, no. it just, it's it, a nose dive. it is, it is. Yeah. And he, you know, he, financially they could have retired when he was in his early fifties. And my grandpa, my grandma was always bugging him to retire. Well, so finally he retires into his sixties or something. He's mid sixties. And he was, you know, we're talking about a guy that, he owned his own um, construction company, um, built you know built many roads all over the nation, and um, we're talking about by the time he was in that age, I mean he'd show up at the job site at ten o'clock, say hi to people, take them to lunch, right. and then, you know I mean so 
you know, more relaxed. Yeah. I mean, you know, and then he'd pick up a shovel and once in a while scoop some gravel. Yeah. I mean, I remember lots of that. It was just the coolest thing. <laughs> and, um, or he'd get in a loader and he'd start, do, you know, driving a loader or whatever. And, um, I thought, what? Well, so he came in one day to the pharmacy and he said, the worst decision I ever made was to retire. And my grandma got upset with him. She looked at him, kind of snarled at him. And I took that to heart and his health went downhill after that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I, I say often that I'm never going to retire as long as I can physically work. Yeah. I'm never going to retire. And I don't think retire. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Our brain needs exercise just like yeah. our body does. And we not physically we're not designed to retire. If retirement is sitting around watching TV, that is not what we're designed to do. I'll tell you one thing. My dad did shift work for 35 years yeah. and we are glad he retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he is too, but he did not, he's still just as active and just involved in everything as he, I mean, now he has better sleep schedules, right? But he's outside every day working in the yard. He's mowing the church lawn. Exactly. He's going he's to the He's staying gym. active. Exactly. He's staying active. Yeah. Uh, too much YouTube, in my opinion, because <laughs> uh, I get the videos texted to me. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, Dad, uh, get outside, please. Um, yeah. Well, we touched on diet and, and exercise Um Outside, and I feel like the generation we were just talking about. You know, my dad used to. I mean, he had a, a metabolism. I thought that was that was big, but if I think about it, it probably scaled around his work schedule too, of farming and ranching and things like that. But they were eating natural food, of course. But I'm sure their appetites were different. Yes. And part of that was probably stimulated by all the things that they were doing. But if our gut health isn't good, our overall health isn't good either. So there has to be something said about the fact that, you know, you're outside, you're doing things, you're doing active things, your appetite increases, but you're probably making better choices too. Well, they didn't have all the sugar. That we have sure. access to all the time now. And they were eating, like you said, bacon and eggs and butter, fat. Right. Fat and protein mm -hmm. are very satiating. And, and and that's why I tend to eat that way because it I don't get hungry when I, when I do eat that way. I had bacon this morning. I, it's one of my favorites. Well, right. you know? I, I, I really, I honestly, I, I challenge people all the time. Um, I dare you to eat too much beef. I mean, seriously, a, eat a, too much steak. I, I dare you. Like. <laughs> yeah. Or I dare you to eat too much eggs. I, I know Janet and I, we eat bacon and eggs often on the weekends. We don't eat breakfast a lot during the week. And, uh, you know, routinely I'll say, well, she's like, how many eggs do you want? Um, you know, and I've already, we've already got some bacon and I'm saying, oh, three eggs. And next thing I know, I can only eat two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and an egg is only. Um, 70 calories. Yeah. I don't need to pay attention to calories. I can't tell now, well, the if you eat real, calorie. Right. If you yeah. eat real food, you don't really need right. to. I right. do track my calories just because it keeps me accountable. Right. And when you eat something stupid, you put it in there and it's like, oh my gosh, I should have done that. Yeah. Because you know? here's the thing, because your body is not a bomb calorimeter, right? So yeah. a, a, a Coke may have, you know, Coke and an avocado basically have the same amount of calories, but one is going to behave very differently. <laughs> well, than the uh, other. right. And I, that's a great example. So, you know, an apple has 100 calories, a, a, a bigger a big apple, mm -hmm. and a Coke has 150 calories. Mm -hmm. I, I, I dare you to eat too many apples. Yeah. I could drink three Cokes right away. Oh, my goodness. And not even stop. You know, but but an apple, I mean, honestly, a big apple is all I can eat. If you eat real food, you just, it's, it's hard to overeat. Um, I know. We recently just got rid of, like, all snack foods. And we did this when we were out in Colorado. We just didn't have a whole lot of snack foods. Um, and I, we both dropped like five to seven pounds just by getting rid of a little, you know, the chips and stuff that sneak in, even though they're made with avocado oil yeah, yeah, or whatever. Right, you know, right. It's, I, it's, you, try to, right. <laughs> you try to pick the healthiest junk food. Um, but we just, I'm like, this is just, it's not good for us. I can, I don't feel as well when I eat it. And so we cleaned it up and boom, weight just kind of fell off. Yeah. It's, it's the inflammation, even though it's, right. you know, the better quality oils, um, it's still junk food and it's still not nutrient, you know, well, nutrient dense and what your gut health needs. Right. It's, um, you know, a good tip is if it doesn't rot, don't eat it. 
True. You know, think, think about the avocado. The avocado is going to rot and those chips are not going to rot. So they're still junk food. If you, I, I always, I often challenge people, if, if you want to eat chips, here's, here's how you can, you won't eat too many chips. Make homemade potato chips. Mm-hmm. I dare you to eat too many. <laughs> Uh, like, There's so much yes. work. You're like, one <laughs> chip and ooh, enjoy it. Yeah, and there's so much work. That's the whole point is that if we don't prepare our food, it's really easy to overeat it. So if it's in a box, you can just keep eating it, keep eating it's it. It's just everywhere. Yeah. You're inundated with all the commercials for junk food. If you're, in a, if you're in an office, there's always somebody bringing in junk. There's just junk, 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 and eat a, a, a mouthful here, a mouthful yeah. there. And it really adds up. Um, and so, yeah, like, you know, our grandparents, they did, everything was from scratch. Yeah. And, and even made it. They spent all day preparing it. They didn't have yeah. time to do anything right. else. You know? And even with the, uh, I think the preparing the food is an important part. Even with the, the keto craze, you know, um, bread just gets hammered yeah, on yeah. and bread is so bad. Bread is so bad. I, I, I'm a big believer. Janet is really a big believer in moderation, but when you look at like Janet's, um, parents and their generation they they baked bread but it Sourdough. was ho- and it was homemade it was fermented and, more than <laughs> i mean it was from scratch homemade Non-GMO. and gmo it was just totally different and i mean they, and they you know i mean could you overeat bread oh yeah. <laughs> Butter yeah. and bread, <laughs> it's fresh out of the oven. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, my mom would. She had one day that she baked bread, and you know, but at the same time, I think about, you know, we didn't, we did not sit in our house. We, you know, our, no. our parents kicked us out the door. We like, couldn't out, be in the house. Well, we didn't have that much room, but you know, you were constantly outside, and and yes, so. You know, it would be grab and run. <laughs> well, and, and go. She bring it outside to you. You stay on the porch and eat. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good point. Here, here's one of the problems: is that going back to nature therapy. Uh, my brother and I have talked about this before. It's like when we used to go out and we'd ride our bikes all over the neighborhood, or we'd go and play baseball outside, or whatever we would do outside um, in the neighborhood. We wouldn't have access to a refrigerator and a pantry. No. So you would you would actually Arcos, go you know, right yeah. that that's all you yeah. know and sometimes drink out of the ditch right <laughs> no mean, we, not for <laughs> we didn't <laughs> no you can't do that in the delta no. yeah our water ran a lot faster so yeah ours was dirty with uh, who knows uh, all kinds of ag chemicals in it yeah um, so uh, you we, we, when you're outside like that you don't have access to you know food and that's one of the problems when. When people are inside watching TV, playing video games, whatever they're doing all day, instead of that activity, one of the problems is, is most of us in America have basically an unlimited food source in our house. Mm-hmm. It's darn near unlimited. And, and that's part of the problem. Convenience. The f- Absolutely. We have lives of convenience. And, you know, the, the thing about the kids, which is most concerning, I re- uh, read an article, and this was a UK study, but kids were spending less time outside than um, prisoners. Yeah. You know, prisoners are allotted a certain amount of time right. spent outside. The kids were getting less than two hours a day outside. So, kids! So what happens to their uh, brain and their development? Because, you know, one of the things that you just touched on is um, what is it doing to them? Well, how about their imaginations? Right. I mean, when you're Play, outside. Creativity. Right. Exactly. When you're outside, you have this space in your head where you are filling it. Not a video game, not a show, not, you know, all that electronics, not your phone. It, you know, I mean, if you think of how many hours kids spent outside daydreaming, imagination, I mean, the creativity part to me is is quite frightening if you think about it. Right. And what happens as they are developing? I mean, I'm not a specialist in this, but it, it's very interesting to me the differences. Well, and and you also learn a lot about physics <laughs> when you're playing, like we did. We were, you know, jumping ditches with bikes, you know, <laughs> jumping out of trees, falling out of trees, which I did, broke some bones. Um, but you know, we were always using up our dad's old building supplies, building tree houses, and and just getting into all kinds of trouble. Um, but we were we were learning a lot about we were interacting with the environment and learning a lot. So stuff we probably don't even realize we were learning at the time. 
Um, and kids are missing out on that completely. What is it doing to their brain? Right. Well, that could be why we have so much anxiety too, mm -hmm. and some depression and things. I mean, I know this past couple of years has brought that on, but you know, one of the things that, you know, we had two boys raising them and, and, you know, activity, outdoor activity oh, wow. keeps them out of trouble, right? Cause mm -hmm. they're tired. Yeah. Right? I mean, but it also gives them a limit too of, a safe too, you know, like you learn your limits right. in a safe way. Um, you know, you learn maybe that's not the best way to do this next time. I'm going to do something different because you don't want to get hurt. I mean, just those boundaries and limits just physically, but you're doing it in a, in an environment that is really, I mean, I'm not say, saying that they couldn't physically harm themselves in a, in a way, but you want to be careful with that. But, but emotionally and mentally they're learning they're learning boundaries and they're learning things in ways that we don't really know or can't really calculate. Um, that's good for them, especially for teenagers, because, you know, they're taking risks in an environment that's better for them. I had read some articles recently too. Um, well, I'll say recently a while back about this place where they allowed kids just to be kids and they were way up in the trees with, and, and nobody got hurt. Right. Now, and and I wonder, are we being too protective with our children and not letting them be outside and exploring nature? Because they're always worried something might happen. Yes, yeah, something may happen, but typically it's not going to be horrible. There's going to be scratches and boo boos, maybe the occasional broken bone. Um, but 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 uh, having them avoid these interactions, I think, is much more harmful in the long run. Well. Like Janet says, <clears throat> with looking at trying to find limits, um, I think especially for for boys, um, you know, you got to know. Well, wait a minute. Um, I guess that didn't work. I couldn't jump that canal, so <laughs> I ended up coming up it short. Was a higher ramp, <laughs> <laughs> right? So either design, either design something different, or you know, practice again. more. Or don't do it again, do that. right? But you got to find your limit, and and I think that's what sets them up for life in general. Mm -hmm. And it's not just limited physical activity, but mental activity right. too. It's like, what can you accomplish? And now what do we do for, you know, boys that are, you know, it, I got into a debate with somebody on social media the other day about ADHD. And I, and I, I, I don't believe in largely, I, I, I do not believe in that diagnosis at all. I mean, if you, if you want to, uh, they do not lack some kind of medication. No, no. I mean, get outside, be active, exactly. exercise their gut health. Cause I've worked with a lot of these kids yeah. and you clean up their gut health. You get them off the phone, you get them sleeping better. And they're like a new kid. Yeah. Outside and exercise, get them off the food dyes yeah. and the really crappy food. And it does it. And it doesn't even take that much, no. but the parents, it's a fight, right? They're like, Oh, it's just not worth it. I'm just going to give my kids. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? This is your child and your child's brain. And this is their, when they're learning the most, they're just like sponges and you're denying them because you don't want to put up the fight. Yeah. Yeah. And, over the food. It, right. Right. And, and I got to think too, that, that largely, I'm going to guess the parent probably has a bad diet also. Probably. Usually in the case. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I see it. So yeah. My friends too. And yeah. I just like, I have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. Talking about I'm, it, surprised I'm, like, I'm surprised you keep your mouth shut. Well, it's because <laughs> they know I've already had that talk and it's just like, you, you guys know what you need to do. Right. So, Right. So, I mean, you touched on food, which is great because I believe that has a lot to do. You know, we were talking about the neurotransmitters being made in the gut. So if you're not eating right, you know, that that's bad too. But it's also those kids are, they're in trouble because they're moving. That's, and you mean, that's why they get in trouble. Yeah. 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 Okay. I and, see. and how about we channel that into letting yes. them play? Yeah. 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 So my youngest son, um, when he was in uh, elementary school, I think the fifth and sixth grade, you know, he, he and maybe even junior high, he's a mover, like he moves. Mm -hmm. And he's always been like that from the time we homeschooled him to teaching him. And he's super smart, but he got in trouble for moving. And, you know, I think one of the problems in our culture is that we want, especially people that move, they want people to sit still. Well, 
maybe we need to, and, and I see schools that are addressing it, but maybe we need to address this in outdoor activity right. for these kids. I mean, and that's one thing I will say about our youngest son. He's always been very active, but having him be active probably kept him out of a lot of trouble and, and he's super smart, and, but because of the environment, though, the environment right. is making him be something right. that is going against nature. Right. right. And so the recess time, I mean, there's some schools that don't even really have recess anymore. And I'm like, you have these kids for eight hours a day and they can't move. Right. Yeah, that many, makes many no school, sense. Yeah, many schools got rid of recess and they got rid of um, PE, too. Right. Yes. And, and, and like, I mean, seriously, I mean, Right. Well, what what do we need more than anything in in America right now? We need to be outside. We need to be active. And that, um, and I have friends who homeschool. Um, I had health coaches who, and one of them had six children. She homeschooled them, but it was for the morning, right? It was for like four four hours in the morning, yeah. and the rest of the day they were learning stuff. They were outside. They were active. And uh, these kids are the most well behaved kids I've ever been around in my life. Um, because they're fed well, they do everything yeah. right, no TV, no electronics, and you can tell a marked difference between them and the ones who are not doing that. Well, night and day. Yeah. <clears throat> we we homeschooled our kids for through junior high and they were basically we would we were done by eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it was a little bit later. Yeah, maybe noon. And then they were outside doing mm-hmm. doing their thing. Um, and I always challenge people. It's like, you know, what what's you know, when kids or adults get depressed, um, you know, they go to the doctor and what do they do? They give them medication. <sighs> Every right. single time. And I think all of us have dealt with depression mm-hmm. at least at least short term. Yeah. And I mean, there's many times I've I've you know, I just don't feel the best. And then I go out and I just go on a hour bike ride and gee, my depression Dude. is gone. The endorphins. Yeah. I mean, it's, things. it's just like and dopamine and yes. all kinds of the neurotransmitters. I challenge anybody that to find a better drug than exercise for treating depression, period. I agree. Just getting outside and you don't have to, you know, max out your heart rate either. It's just getting outside and moving your body and exposing yeah. your, uh, again, sun, eyes to the sun, all the other sounds and, and things like that. And when you do get your heart rate up, you do produce endorphins. Those are endogenous feel good substances. Right. They right. are good for you. And it also is great for pain, chronic pain patients. Yeah. You're missing out. If you're not getting, if you're not experiencing the endogenous production of endorphins, which you get from exercise, you're missing out on some great pain control. Absolutely. It just works. Janet, as we wind this podcast up, how do you want to uh, wind it up? Well, <laughs> you know, Sean touched on something about my personality and I'll, I'll throw it out to my dad and, and that generation that moderation in all things. And mm-hmm. that includes um, activities outside because my husband could be there way too long, <laughs> which is okay if he, he backs it up so he doesn't have overload with cortisol. But I feel like this is such a missing element in healthcare right now that we've told people to stay in a corner and in a box and a Petri dish is really what we've developed. And it's not a healthy one. Um, so if you're depressed, if you have anxiety, if you're having gut issues, if you're having sleep issues, I challenge you to get outside and, and, and enjoy and, and make it a priority. Yes. I think a lot of times we say we don't have time, but it doesn't have to be the whole day. It could be happening. Yeah. It could be 30 minutes. It could be just, you know, going for a walk just to get yourself away from all the other stress because stress causes issues with our gut and our sleep and all that. And so what a beautiful way to spend a day besides, you know, enjoying this fall weather. So I challenge you get outside. Absolutely. And Dr. Beard, how would you like to? Wow. I don't you- know how I can. I mean, that she nailed it. Um, and that's, and even if you have a desk job inside, you get breaks. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you need to be out. And that's what I tell my patients on your break, get outside. Even if it's just for five or 10 minutes, get outside, expose yourself, try eating your lunch outside. And if you can't do that because of the weather and get near at least a bright window yep. with a lot of sunlight and eat it there. But you cannot just hide away in your little hole all day. It is going to wreak havoc on your health. Yeah. 
If anybody has any questions and wants to reach out to you, what's the best way? Um, probably visit my website because then you'll get all the information you need. And what is your website? Our web is simply um, amybeardmd.com. That's easy enough. Yes. So, well, thank you listeners and viewers for tuning in. Hopefully you learned as much as I did on this podcast. I always love having guests on like Dr. Beard because I learned so much from them. So thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. And Monday, do not miss out. I don't know who our guest is, <laughs> but we are, it's going to, as always, it's going to be a great guest. So 1230 to 130 Pacific Standard Time, tune in to our regularly scheduled podcast. So thank you all for listening and viewing today. Oh,